Question number one. Which of the following is false? Before answering this question, notice here that we are looking for the false answer. Keep that in mind while reading the options for the answer. Actually, I sometimes say to myself out loud, we are looking for the false answer. We are looking for the false answer. Just to make sure what I'm looking for. Option number one. In a system, two different failures may have different severities. This is true, as every failure can have a different severity. A system crash might have a high severity, and a typo might have a low severity, and both of them are considered failures that the user will see. Option B. A system is necessarily more reliable after debugging for the removal of a fault. This is confusing, but this is actually false. Fixing a bug might introduce more bugs. This is why we need retesting to confirm the test and regression testing to make sure that the fix didn't break anything else. Also, reliability means that the system is working and you can depend on it. Fixing a fault in a system doesn't necessarily mean that the system is more reliable. This is somehow related to the seventh principle of testing absence of errors falsy. Even if we have a system with no faults, doesn't mean we have a reliable system if the system doesn't perform what the customer wants. Option C, a fault need not affect the reliability of the system. This is to confirm what we have just said in option B. Some faults will not affect the reliability of the system. Option D, undetected errors may lead to faults and eventually to incorrect behavior. This is obviously true. So the correct answer here, which is the false statement, is B. Question number two. According to the ISTQB glossary, debugging, option A, is part of the fundamental testing process. Well, a debugging is not part of the fundamental testing process, which includes planning and control, analysis and design, implementation and execution, evaluating exit criteria and reporting, and last, test closure. So debugging is not part of the fundamental testing process. Option B includes the repair for the cause of the failure. This is correct. Debugging is finding the defect that is the cause of the failure and repairing it. Option C involves intentionally adding known defects. This is obviously wrong. There is no need to explain it anymore. Option D follows the steps of a test procedure. This is the execution part of the implementation and execution testing activity in the fundamental test process. So this has nothing to do with debugging. So the correct answer is B. Debugging includes the repair of the cause of a failure. Question number three. This seems to be like a long question. I don't like to read the whole question before actually knowing what the question is looking for. So I'm trying to locate the last part of the head of the question to understand what I'm looking for. So it says here, be more closely met by redirecting the test effort according to which test principle. So the question is asking about a testing principle. So let's look at the answers even before reading the whole story of the questions. Impossibility of exhaustive testing, importance of early testing, the absence of errors falsy, and defective clustering. Now we know that we are looking for a test principles in one of those four testing principles. So now let's start reading the questions. System test execution on a project is planned for eight weeks. After a week of testing, a tester suggests that the test objective stated in the test plan of finding as many defects as possible during system test might be more closely met by redirecting the test effort according to which test principle. So the question here is asking which testing principle that will allow us to find as many defects as possible. The answer is simply D, defect clustering. In defect clustering, we depend on the Pareto principle, which is also called the 80-20 rule. It says that approximately 80% of the problems are found in about 20% of the modules. So if you want to uncover a high number of defects, it's useful to employ that principle and try to find and target areas of the application under test where the high proportion of defects can be found. So the answer here is B. Someone might say that early testing would also find more bugs because we have started early. This is partially true, but the main objective of the early testing principle is to find the defects as early as possible because the earlier we find them, the less cost it will be to fix them. Early testing is not directly related to finding more defects. It's related to lowering the cost of finding and fixing the bugs.